tonight. Ole Miss makes the 100-mile trek to Starkville to potentially play spoiler to its rival, Mississippi State. And to give you a sense of the rivalry, we take you into the teeth of the tailgate. We start on the Ole Miss side at Matt Hasselbeck. That's right, Adam. I mean, I'm here in Starkville, Mississippi, looking for an Ole Miss tailgate. I couldn't find one. I found about five people. But today, Ole Miss has got to find a running game. They're going to do it with quarterback John Rice Plumley. He can run the ball. If he was a running back, I believe he'd be one of the best running backs in all of the SEC. But guess what? Mississippi State, they got a running attack, too. Isn't that right, Pat McAfee? You're absolutely right, Matt Hasselbeck. Kylan Hill, the running back for Mississippi State, leads the entire SEC. He has an offensive line that is massive. And what Ole Miss is walking into here at Davis Wade Stadium is an electrifying environment. Get used to the cowbells. Get used to the physicality. The Egg Bowl is one of the best robberies in college football. For more about that, we go back to handsome Adam Amin. Pat McAfee, you're a sweetheart. Not a lot of love, though, on this dividing line between the Mississippi State fans and the Ole Miss section. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I have foreign parents. They didn't understand what college football rivalries meant in a big city. So we come down to Mississippi, and you can sense the hate between these two fan bases, and you can sense the tension between the two teams on the field. In fact, this is a game that broke out into a brawl that led to suspensions a season ago. All of that being said, these Ole Miss fans are hoping that they have an opportunity to end Mississippi State's bowl hopes tonight. And it may be an interesting twist as we get set for this game. Some breaking news as we go down to the field and Molly McGrath. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right, Adam. When Mississippi State players took the field in their pads and uniforms, uh, their quarterback, Tommy Stevens, was in street clothes. I spoke to their, their head coach, Joe Moorhead. He told me that Tommy Stevens is out for this game with an upper body injury, and true freshman Garrett Schrader will start at quarterback tonight. Stevens sustained the injury in last week's game and has been limited in practice, so Schrader has seen first-team snaps all week, and Moorhead told me the key with a true freshman at quarterback is to start fast and keep it simple, but teammates tell me that Schrader oozes with confidence, and this stage will not be too big for him, Adam. We get set for the 116th meeting all time. Ole Miss has won the last two Egg Bowls in Starkville, and they have an opportunity tonight to play spoiler against their rival from 100 miles away. Mississippi State needs to win to extend their season to a bowl game. They've been to a bowl each of the last nine seasons. That streak in Joe Moorhead's second season is on the line tonight. 116th meeting back to 1901, one of college football's oldest played rivalries. In fact, the second most played in the SEC behind Auburn and Georgia. These two teams meet on Thanksgiving for the 26th time and for the third consecutive year. The road team has won each of the last four meetings. A great atmosphere here, Molly McGrath. Yeah, that's right, Adam. This is a heated rivalry where fights have broken out. We saw a fight break out in last year's game, so both programs Trophy's 92-year history, the Golden Egg will not see the field until after the game. Usually in the past, it's usually brought onto the field in the final minutes of regulation, but this year it will remain guarded in the locker room of last year's winner. So right now, it's in Mississippi State's locker room. If the Bulldogs win it, they'll run and get it. And if Mississippi or, or Ole Miss wins it, the trophy will be transported to the visitors' locker room. But that doesn't mean that this isn't going to be a physical and chippy game, Adam. And Ole Miss won the toss into Bird, so it is Brian Cole on the return for the Bulldogs. And a good return out across the 30-yard line. 28-yard return, setting it up for Garrett Schrader, true freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Tenth appearance as a college football player, fourth career start. His dad, Tracy, played football and baseball at the Citadel. He was one of the top dual-threat quarterbacks out of high school, won a couple of state championships. He's a physical player. We saw that helicoptering hit he took early in the season against Kansas State. He is not afraid to get his head in there. No, he's not. He's a tough kid and a great runner. He was recruited to Alabama as a wide receiver. Other SEC schools thought maybe a defensive back, but Mississippi State's given him a chance to play quarterback as a freshman. Well, the first play of this year's Egg Bowl, he gets hammered 
immediately. Into the backfield, Sam Williams, the linebacker. A loss of five. I mean, he just blew that thing up there on the little read there by Schrader. Now, Schrader would have saw some time tonight, but now he's getting the reins. I mean, this is a big-time night for the freshman here in the Egg Bowl. And a huge stop for Sam Williams, a great pass rusher. They're looking for him to have a big night. He's their leading sack man with five this year. We'll keep it on the ground with the leading rusher in the SEC, Kylan Hill, will get three of those yards back. It's going to be third down and long. Hill is closing in on the Mississippi State single-season rushing record and could be the first Bulldog to lead the SEC in rushing since Anthony Dixon set that, set that record a decade ago. Playing in his third Egg Bowl, he's had good numbers in his career against Ole Miss. Third and a dozen. Schrader hit as he throws. The pressure came in from Kadir Shepard, who does not have a sack this year, but the coaches believe he could have a big game tonight. They said he's got the ability to break out. It's been body blow, body blow. We're looking for an uppercut. This is a great way to start for him. Third and long helps, but getting that pass rush is going to be key tonight. Also massive for Coach McIntyre, the D coordinator for Ole Miss. They're 96th in the country enforcing three and outs. To get one that early, you can build some momentum going forward. So Tucker Day will punt it after a three and out to Elijah Moore. Day boots it away. Fair catch, Elijah Moore at the 31-yard line. John Rice Plumley, I can't wait to see this guy in person. I said this earlier today. If he was a running back, he'd be one of the most explosive running backs in all of the SEC. He's got elite speed. Mississippi State's coaches talked about Michael Vick, Johnny Manziel, Brett Favre. That's the style of play that they see about him on tape. Plumley keeps it. Great pickup. Hurdles a man. Has a first down. And he is the first Ole Miss quarterback to reach 1,000 rushing yards in a single season. And it's been a rarity in Ole Miss history to see 1,000-yard seasons from anybody. I mean, Rich Rodriguez comes down here and brings this little zone read option offense. He said this Plumley guy is going to play baseball. He's a freak athlete. He's showcasing the girls. And now it's Jerry and Ely. The true freshman who's been running well in the stead of Scotty Phillips, who is active tonight, he picks up 14 yards. How about Plumley and Ely, the two future Mississippi baseball players? Yeah, baseball players, and Ely doesn't even have a desire to play in the NFL. He's like, listen, I'm going to go straight to the Major League Baseball, do that thing. But tonight, he's trying to get a win here in this Egg Bowl, and he's going to do it with his elite speed, trying to get on the edges. They were running a little bit of tempo there, getting the cowbells out of it, hopefully. You see John Rice Plumley, the sixth Rebel with a 1,000-yard season. There have only been eight 1,000-yard seasons in the history of Ole Miss. Little RPO action, and he'll dump it off for Ely. Gets grabbed in the open field across the 35 by Martin Emerson. Molly? Adam, John Rice Plumley told me he's already sick of the sound of cowbells. <laughs> to prepare for this hostile environment, the Rebels coaching staff blasted crowd noise and cowbells from a massive speaker on a golf cart. Back that up right next to Plumley while he practiced all week long. Trying to respond in this environment as he tosses to Ely, who lost the football. Mississippi State has the takeaway. Ryan Cole with the recovery. When you talk about impact players for Mississippi State, you got to start with Ewell Thompson. He causes the fumble, and Brian Cole, another leader, captain, impact player, comes up with the recovery. They talked about Ely not putting the ball on the ground. He does a nice job of protecting it, but a huge stop for Thompson early on. Oh, get to the chain on. I wish I knew what that was. <laughs> They've got a couple of different props on the sideline for takeaways. Four possessions, three three and outs, and a fumble combined. Garrett Schrader heaving it towards midfield, and it's caught for a first down by Dedrick Thomas. 20-yard pickup. They go with the naked bootleg. Schrader had a guy wide open in the middle of the field. He didn't see him for some unknown reason, but makes a nice... I guess a nice throw with a great catch by the wide receiver, Dedrick Thomas. Definitely a great throw. Good pump fake as well for Garrett Schrader. 
Uh, he's in traffic and he's going to get wrapped up by Tyreekus Tisdale. Had a sack in their contest against LSU 12 days ago. A defense that has been banged up, especially in the secondary throughout the season. This front, though, has a lot of talent for Ole Miss, and Mike McIntyre, the former Colorado head coach, is the defensive coordinator. Yeah, and they've been actually pretty decent against the run. It's been against the pass that they've struggled just a little bit. You mentioned Mike McIntyre. He's a kind of a Parcells guy, a Mike Zimmer guy. He spent a lot of time in the NFL. Teams like the Jets and the Cowboys, obviously, was the head coach of Colorado for a while. Schrader. Off the read, dumps it off for Isaiah Zuber, the former Kansas State Wildcat. Thank your pardon for Ross Green, 82, not 12. The tight end who's having a great season, a career year. And you mentioned the naked bootleg. That's a way to get the tight end going. Farrard Green is a good one. He does the dirty work in the running game, kind of like an extra offensive lineman, punishing blocker, but good as a receiver also. And also, getting Schrader out of the pocket, by the way, will maybe give up some of that pressure that the Ole Miss D-line has been putting on him. It's been a smart adjustment here by the Mississippi State offense. Straight up the gut. Nick Gibson. First point to the end goal. Belongs to the Bulldogs. There are 26 seniors playing their final home game and potentially their final game tonight for Mississippi State. Nick Gibson is among that crew in his 35th career game. A huge touchdown to get Mississippi State on the board first. Chase Christman makes it 7 nothing. Well, it's 26 seniors, but this is a 27-yard scamper right up the middle to put Mississippi State up top in the Egg Bowl. In the midst of the Mississippi State student section, they went nuts when Nick Gibson took it to the house. <laughs> Well, it's a little eye distraction with the jet sweep, but some great blocking up the middle. We say it all the time, up the middle, solve the riddle. Nick Gibson, untouched. Right through the middle of that Ole Miss team. Great hole set up there by the right side of the offensive line. They're going bonkers on the sideline, as they should. Out to the 25 comes Ole Miss. Bumpley trying to throw it, but a good job by Chauncey Rivers, the defensive end. Maybe got a piece of that ball as Plumley got rid of it. And the naked bootleg, we mentioned it earlier, it's going to be a big part of the plan tonight. There's another one. It's a nice way. We got young freshman quarterbacks. Naked bootlegs are an opportunity to kind of shut your brain off, roll out, just go through a progression read. One, two, three. A play that a lot of these guys have been running since high school. Right up the gut, good run by Ely. He'll set up a third down and manageable with a nine-yard gain. Guys, we were talking about the Mississippi State defense. They're going to get loud now. This is the first time in a long time that Mississippi State D is at full strength. A lot of suspensions and injuries. They've got most of their lineup intact for the first time in about a month and a half. Ely, second effort, first down second effort and you have to honor Plumlee on the zone read keepers he holds that backside guy that you can't block Pat I remember you when you were playing at West Virginia you had one of like the original yeah. running quarterbacks in Pat White a great second Cog and Steve Slayton is this similar to what you remember very similar I was talking to coach Rodden before the game and what he was saying about Plumlee was very similar to Pat in the big moments he likes to show out his first game was against Alabama the kid never gets rattled and he likes using his athleticism a lot Hands it off to Snoop Connor, and Snoop got blown up by Errol Thompson. And Spencer in the thick of things, too. Errol Thompson is a physical middle linebacker, kind of a throwback. Ooh. At the next level, he'll be great on first and second down. Probably will come off the field in nickel. But if you're talking about winning first and second down, that's exactly the kind of linebacker you want to have on your defense. 
Leading tackler, he makes all the calls, he sets all the fronts. Plumley bottled it, got it back, and got smacked right back down to the ground by Marquis Spencer. It's a Batista celebration afterwards. High snap, mishandles it, comes off the edge, boom, blows him up in the backfield. Third wall foul for this old Miss team as the Cowbells come alive here in Stark Vegas. Plumley got a long way to go. And he's going to get run down from the backside by Jaquarius Landrews, the safety, the second leading tackler. Guys, full strength defense, lit atmosphere, rivalry game. This is a nice combination for Mississippi State, especially without their quarterback in Tommy Stevens tonight. And it took about, I guess, what do we got? Four minutes to go in the first quarter here until it got a little chippy. We know the history between these two teams. Dedrick Thomas in traffic with the fair catch at the 26 yard line. Let's see. I'm an apple pie guy. Oh boy, that's a good move. Classic. America. Kylan Hill for some yardage back to the 24. Third down coming up for Mississippi State. You know, Darrell Williams also a senior. To watch the seniors come out of the tunnel here before the game was awesome. I mean, the respect that this crowd showed them was big. Get a big win on senior night, especially in robbery game, is massive. You guys yeah. remember your senior nights? There was nothing like this. I was up at Boston College playing Army in a snowstorm, Ooh. sleet storm. This is a great atmosphere, nice, cool night. A lot of cowbells, great tailgating. Mine was also in a snowstorm. Had a blast, kicked a ball far. In the snow, that's pretty good. Celebrated hard. As always. Garrett Trader, you guys talked about his running ability. He runs it on third and 12 for a first down. Tylen Hill, who we know for being the best running back in the SEC right now, leads the way for Schrader and gets a great block for him to pick up this big first down. <laughs> D cleats a guy. You love to see that out of your running back. Hibbler got knocked back. And that's the thing, there's going to be designed runs tonight for both of these quarterbacks, but to be successful, I think both of these freshman quarterbacks on passing plays got to be able to tuck it and run. That was a great job by Schrader. We'll keep it and dump it off. Keaton Thompson is out there to make the grab. Keaton Thompson who has played in an Egg Bowl in his career. Remember two years ago when Nick Fitzgerald suffered that awful ankle injury? It was Keaton Thompson who stepped in. He hasn't seen the field much at all this year and is playing a big role tonight. And the crowd here recognized right away the two quarterbacks on the field uh -huh. at the same time. Cowbells start to shake a little bit. And usually what that is, it's a little bit of a setup. Yeah. There could be a trick play coming later tonight. They wanted to get a snapshot of what that two quarterback adjustment would be at Ole Miss. Big first down there. That's something where you're literally just seeing how they react, Matt. That's all you're looking for right there. It's like a Kodak, a Polaroid. And somebody ha has to recognize that for Ole Miss's defense, correct? If you see him, is that something you have to make sure you point out because it's an anomaly for Well, them? that's why there's all these coaches up in the box. Okay. You know, some of the coaches are up here, the coordinators are up here, they're on headsets, they're talking down to the sidelines, and they're coming up with a plan for the next time they see number six and number 10 in the game at the same time. Fresh set of downs and a run for Kylan Hill. Just a couple. And think about how different that is for Ole Miss. You came into this game, this mm -hmm. rivalry game, thinking, preparing for Tommy Stevens. Right. You're thinking, you know, your scout team guys wearing number seven all week, number seven. We're studying number seven, number seven. And then all of a sudden the game starts and you're going up against number six. You got Schrader all day. He's they're similar styles. I don't think the playbook changes too much, but you were studying the wrong guy. And now all of a sudden Keaton Thompson's in there as well. Probably advantage Mississippi State in terms of game plan. Loud and physical in quarter number one in the 116th meeting. Going back to 1901, one of college football's oldest rivalries here in Starkville tonight. 7 up. A happy Thanksgiving to you and yours from our little family here in Starkville. Mississippi State with second and eight. And Kylan Hill surges towards the sticks.
closing in on that all time Mississippi State record tonight. That was on the mind of the Mississippi native this evening. Grew up in Columbus, Mississippi, which is where we stayed. It's about 25 miles from here. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> drive. I feel, like, I feel like you know that drive pretty well, actually, the last uh, day or so, Pat. Showed up at the wrong hotel, but I'm excited <laughs> to be here at the Egg Bowl. As long as you're here, pal, that's all we care about. Little read play, pull for Kylan Hill. Blocking from his receivers downfield, and he takes it inside the 15. It's a 27 yard game for Kylan Hill. We mentioned he does it all. They like him on the outside. This is an inside zone that starts out inside, but he pops it outside. Great blocking by the wide receivers downfield. He's quick, he's powerful. He's kind of the bread and butter of this offense. It doesn't matter what the play is, he's the answer. At a career high 237 scrimmage yards five nights ago here against Abilene Christian, a blowout win for Mississippi State. Right back to Hill. Down near the five yard line. This has been a Mississippi State team all year that has gotten off the slow start after slow start. How big would it be to go up 14 nothing in this rivalry game? They're on the doorstep. It would be massive, especially with Kylan Hill running the way he is. He's running hard, he's running downhill, he's got great vision. It really got it going right now. Right back to him in the middle of the traffic. Oh, mark his forward progress right around the two. And this is a fun place to be as a play caller on offense where you could still potentially get a first down and not score. So you're more inclined to maybe run the ball, right. just smash it up in there because that defense, they're trying to keep you out of the end zone. Well, especially when you have the leading rusher in the SEC who's been off to a hot start, but Schrader can also get loose now too. Third and about a half yard here. Oh no, first down they say. Let's take another look at it. Yeah, they're gonna give him the first down. It sets up first and goal. And that's what I'm saying. You get four opportunities now from the two and you've got the defense on their heels. They gotta do all they can do to stop this run. Chance number one. The push towards the goal line is a little bit short for Hill. Mark him at the one. And for the defense, this is a little bit like a fist, fist fight in a phone booth. There's not much you can do, nowhere you can really go. But the number one thing is you got to stop the run. If they score another way, if they throw a fade, if they do a play action pass, like, okay, you maybe tip your cap to them, but you cannot let them just run it in. Instead of the one of the better rushing defenses in the country, they've struggled against the pass, Mississippi Ole Miss. Trying to stack up Kylan Hill, and they do as he leapt towards the goal line. Jacquez Jones, Austrian Robinson, those bodies up front trying to fill the hole. Yeah, great job by Jones, Pat. This guy had an incredible year as a freshman, played well so far this year. That's a big stop. You talk about stop the run first, and then deal with whatever the consequences of a different play call off of that are. 13th play of the drive. They've run 11 times and passed only once. Third and goal. This time a keep and a touchdown for Schrader. Exactly, Pat, what you pointed out. It might be a chance for Schrader, and he punches it in for the yeah, fifth especially time. Especially when you pound it with Kylan Hill a couple of times, get the defense reared up, ready to go for up the gut, and then, boom, little now you see me, now you don't pull it out to the side by Schrader with a good beard. That was a nice drive for Mississippi State. 13 plays, 74-yard series, 12 runs, one pass. Really impressive. The defense collapses. Schrader says, like Pat says, now you see me, now you don't. Touchdown, Mississippi State. You know what that means, Pat? Cowbell. More cowbell. 
You see the Golden Egg Trophy. Molly told you before the game that for the first time in its 92-year history, it's not going to see the field during the game, as is tradition after a little bit of a fracas, to say the least, at the end of the third quarter last season between these two teams. Tylen Knight, excellent athlete, is going to get smacked shy of the 20-yard line. Excellent coverage for Mississippi State special team unit. So now, John Rice Plumley goes back to work. A look at tonight's PlayStation player impact rating, 85 on a scale of 0 to 100. We see what the deal is. He has started now each of the last eight games after Matt Corral started the first four. The offense has been a little bit more productive with Plumley on the field, particularly because of his running ability. Yeah, and they think they have two starters, but Plumley's next level with his speed. And I know they're down two scores, but they were down 28 to nothing to LSU, and they rallied. He came and brought him back and did it mostly with his legs. Jerry and Ely knocked down near the 20-yard line. Jaquarius Landrews, the safety. A lot of freshmen on this Ole Miss offense here now. Down 14 on the road in a rompous environment in a rivalry game. Gonna have to answer. Pat, you talked about it. They've got 51 freshmen on this team. That's an incredible number. And for them to come in here unfazed, not no blink. Nice little trickery by Plumlee as he finds Elijah Moore for the first time. Their leading receiver finally gets into it in the second quarter and takes it out near the 46. I love it, Pat. You were talking about the creativity of Rich Rodriguez. You had him when you were at West Virginia. This is a fake run to the left. Quarterback designed run to the right. And oh, by the way, now we're running routes with our best receiver, Elijah Moore, on the sail route. Nice explosive gain for Ole Miss. There's Ely across the 50 and Pat he is one of our impact players tonight Elijah Moore the leading receiver on this team 65 catches this year yeah he's a guy that they've relied on a lot here Elijah Moore can make a play for him like he did just there Bryce Plumley likes looking the ball to him and in this offense you need a guy that you can get the ball to so the backfield can continue to work yeah Mississippi State they got a great corner in Cameron Dantzler number three Elijah Moore will be moved around. He'll be in the slot some, but when he's outside, Dantzler on Moore, great matchup. John Rice Plumley fakes the end around. He keeps it running laterally, and there is right on cue Cameron Dantzler on the perimeter. And I like this guy for his coverage ability. I really appreciate that. But I also appreciate what he is as a tackler. A lot of corners, they think of themselves just as a lockdown guy, not willing to mix it up in the running game. That was an impressive tackler, tackle by Dantzler. He fired up there to make that thing happen. Now we got third wall. More window dressing from Ole Miss here on that last play. Mississippi State loves to blitz on third down. Here they come with the blitz. Plumlee got rid of it, and he finds his man in Dennis Jackson, the true freshman from Sun Rail, Mississippi. Just the fifth catch of his career, picks up 12. Empty set, relaxed John Rice Plumlee, hits the slant there for the first down without the laces, with the blitz coming. I mean, that's just good offense right there. And that's what you have to do, just if I could take a second on the quarterback thing. A catch and throw out of shotgun, don't expect to get the laces. Practice not having the laces because that's exactly how you have to do it. Well done by John Rice Plumley. Plumley keeps and he gets knocked down on the perimeter again. Excellent job by the safety Marcus Murphy, who's back in the lineup tonight. Nice tackle, but I believe this was a misread by Plumley. This is a zone read where you either give it to the running back or you keep it as the quarterback. Had he given the ball to Snoop Connor there? I think they had something on the edge. Now, with that being said, with the zone read, a lot of discipline has to be done by the defense, which they've been showing here, showcasing here. It is Connor in the backfield with John Rice Plumley. And notice the formation, how spread it spread out it is, how far away the wide receivers are. Plumley rifles it over the middle to Braylon Sanders. Down inside the 10-yard line, first and goal for Ole Miss. What a shot by Plumley! And that's exactly why they have him lined up so wide, Matt. Exactly, Pat. So you can come inside. If you have that wide split, expect in-breaking routes. That's exactly what they did. They had two guys on both sides outside the number. It gives you lots of real estate in the middle of the field. 
31 yards to the junior from Georgia. Not a lot of room to try to maneuver for Snoop Connor. He'll get about a yard right in the traffic with Marquis Spencer and Errol Thompson, those big linebackers. We saw what Ole Miss's offense can do when they get rolling and they get on the board. Did it against LSU a couple of weeks ago. Connor down to about the three. So we're going to be three. Yep, down to the three. Third and goal. And for whatever reason, Ole Miss has not been great in goal to go situations this season. They got all the pieces, they got all the parts. They just haven't gotten it done. They got an opportunity to get it done tonight. And this is the loudest section of this stadium where they are right now. Going into a lot of the students. Plumley with Connor blocking. Opens up the hole for the touchdown for John Rice Plumley. Number 12 on the ground for Plumley in his true freshman season. Only Clyde Edwards Alaire of LSU has more in the SEC. Well, it's great blocking on at the point of attack. They've got two tight ends out there to the strong side, and they get Connor. He's the physical of the of the back, more physical of the back, with a great block. And Plumley just with elite speed to outrun Willie Gay right there, the linebacker. Luke Logan on for the extra point. Cuts the lead in half. I'll tell you what right here, John Rice Plumley is an athlete. They might not have been good at goal to go, but put the ball in the athlete's hand. We got a good one here at the Egg Bowl. And I got to say, Plumley from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, home of Brett Favre. I see a little Brett Favre in his game. We heard that as a little bit of a comparison from the Mississippi State coaching staff as well. On the return, Brian Cole out across the 20-yard line. The keep by Schrader, he dumps it off for Austin Williams. Near side of the field, it'll pick up some yardage. Redshirt sophomore from Ocean Springs, Mississippi, a fan favorite. His mom, Carol, and his dad, Craig, met in high school in Germany at Ramstein Air Base, where Austin eventually learned to play football in fifth grade, because he moved from St. Louis to Germany, to Arkansas, back to Germany, then Mississippi, because his father, Craig, rose to Lieutenant Colonel Vice Commander in the Air Force. Right back to the ground for a couple yards for Tyler Hill. Definitely would like to say thank you to his parents, for, for his dad for serving in the military. Also, happy Thanksgiving to all those who are serving who aren't at home. We appreciate the hell out of you. Amen. And Kylan Absolutely. Hill is such a weapon for this Mississippi State team. You saw it with the pass there. They're so scared of the Kylan Hill draw up the middle that whenever Schrader gets outside, it's a lot of one-on-ones for him. And Matt, you pointed out when you were watching some film that they can do a lot of different stuff on the perimeter with their quarterbacks. Without a doubt, you have to defend every blade of grass. That's what these offensive coordinators are trying to get you to do. Boy, a blitz coming. Deep shot, getting rid of it, Schrader. Boy, he was under fire from Dante Evans, the redshirt junior. And I don't think Isaiah Zuber knew that the ball was coming to him. Yeah. Schrader did everything he could to buy time. There's a delayed blitz. He buys time. His eyes are downfield, two hands on the ball, does everything right. And Zuber has no idea that the ball's in the air coming right near him. I, I got to just tell you, Schrader, that beard, it reminds me of the Duck Dynasty guys. I love it. It's a, it's a phenomenal beard. It's got a little Ryan Fitzpatrick to it. Oh, a little Fitz magic. I like it. See if he can find some magic here under a lot of heat. Tyrekus Tisdale and Kedron Smith off the corner with some pressure on Schrader that time. Well, we talked about those naked bootlegs, but it is there is a coaching, you know, there's a coachable X's and O's way to take take that away, and that's edge pressure, and that's what they did there. They brought the corner blitz off the edge to the right-hand side of a right-handed thrower. You got to get away from those naked bootlegs. They're not going to let you get the easy ones. No edge, no chance. Football words. Analyst. Thank you. Three of five on third down. Mississippi State thus far. 
A lot of pressure, but they set up the screen against the blitz. It is sniffed out. Dedrick Thomas had nowhere to go. Immediately run down by A.J. Finley. That is another true freshman in the defensive backfield. This is an all-out blitz up front, and then you know the ball's got to come out quick. So these DBs were playing downhill, and they were ready for that short, quick, wide receiver screen. In that situation, they tell the guys, they say, listen, it's a now and later play. It's going to happen right now, or it's going to be a deep shot. You'll know on the first two steps of the quarterback. Don't expect anything intermediate, though, because we got that blitz coming. I just learned something. That was incredible. That was good stuff. Now and later. Not a great uh -oh. candy, by the way. Tucker Day. Athlete. Here we go. Very exciting moment for Pat McAfee. Mm -hmm. But Tucker Day's got nowhere to go. And the Ole Miss offense will set up in plus territory. I'm sorry, guys, but that is not good for the brand. It, it looks like the punter just drops the snap pad. I'll let you take it. Yeah, the first thing you have to do as a punter is always catch the ball. He gets it back up. I think he could have got one off there. Instead, he opts to run for it on fourth and 11, which is not a great decision. Going to have to learn from that from later. Gets tackled short. Big play by the special teams for Ole Miss. Pat, what happens when you drop the ball? Where does your where do you, uh, your eyes go? What's the first thought that you have to try to pick up a play? Well, first things first, you probably panic immediately. And I think that's <laughs> what he did. But then you got to get your eyes upfield just like a quarterback and see if he can get one off. I think in the future, he would have choose to punt that instead. And, and I think he could have gotten it off in the way the college rules are. You're allowed to punt it with guys downfield. Yeah, very different than the NFL rules. Plumley serving. At the last moment, he finds Jerry and Ely for a first down. That was sick. Boy, sh shades of Auburn, Alabama in 2013. I'm thinking about Sammy Coates right there. And I love this play. This is something in their repertoire. They pull two offensive linemen. It's a quarterback run. And his lead blocker slips out as an outlet if they play the run too hard. I mean, that's a that's a baseball star to baseball star. It's almost like they're turning a double play right there. It's a big game for Ole Miss. We mentioned that they weren't going to flinch. Down 14 nothing. We've seen them come back before. They did it largely with Plumlee's legs. He gets a yard here. Remember, he's coming off 212 rushing yards and four rushing touchdowns in that loss to LSU 12 days ago. I think the thing about this offense is, and you saw that on a little jump pass, he dropped off the Ely. There's a lot of options on every single play. Everyone can be a run. Everyone can be a quarterback keeper. It can be a throw out to the side. There's a lot of options with this offense. That's why a freshman executing it this well is so impressive. And it goes back to make them defend every blade of grass. Make them defend it all. Down the middle, outside, all of it. Ooh, right through the hands of Elijah Moore. That would have set up first down and goal. Instead, third and long, Molly. Adam, before this drive, the message to Ole Miss's offensive line was our quarterback is getting forced outside. Open up the middle. Let him do what he does best. And John Rice Plumley told me he loves running between the tackles, doesn't want to run like a quarterback. Instead of shying from contact, he welcomes it, Adam. He's listed at 192 pounds as a true freshman. Trying to pound through this defense, which is going to get ramped up for third down and nine. Once the ball is set, you have to stop banging the cowbells. Plumley, at the last moment, got rid of it. And there was not enough there for Elijah Moore to make it. Errol Thompson helped run him down. And it's fourth down and short coming up here inside the 25. And he gives him an opportunity to make a gutsy decision on a fourth and short. Third and 10, had that ball been incomplete. Completely different situation. Nice play to get him in a fourth and manageable. And they're going for it. They're going to be aggressive. They fake the reverse. Plumlee's got a lot of room on the near side of the field, and he's got the first down. He'll take it out at the 12. You guys said something to me during the break. This guy's got a lot of poise, not for a freshman, just for anybody. Really, for anybody. They go with the fake reverse. They try to have a throw to the right. He says, no, no, no. I trust my legs. I'm going left. It's an 11-yard gain, but he ran about 42 yards to get it. I talked to Coach Rod before the game, and he said his first start was in Alabama. In Denny Stadium banner, he said he didn't even blink. And Pat, you know, you and I played with a lot of different people, different styles of guy, guys that did well at the combine, guys that didn't. Some guys have an it factor. I would just say about John Rice Plumley, he's got an it factor. Agreed. 
Plumley rolls, tosses to the end zone, and too tall for Octavius Cooley, the tight end. Second a goal coming up. And this is, you know, they're trying to get the ball to Octavius Cooley. A little high on the throw. This is an area where John Rice Plumley needs to improve as a thrower, particularly on the run. He's a young player. He does so much well, but in the passing game, I think that's where his, his improvement has to come these next few years. Handoff. Ely towards the edge, lunging for the goal line and in. Huge touchdown for Ole Miss. What a response by the Rebels after the Bulldogs got out to a two-score lead. It's a huge response, and it ate up some clock. A really nice block here by Mingo, the wide receiver on the edge. Helps Ely get in. Yeah, Ely, a freshman. John Rice Plumley, a freshman. Didn't blink here. Mingo, a freshman, didn't blink in Starkville here. And guys, Down 14 zip. Now guys, we got to check the top anchor. 88% of their offense comes from freshmen. The future is bright for these guys. They don't care about any of that. They're trying to get the win tonight. That's the highest percentage of offense from freshmen for any FBS team, 88%. Luke Logan on the kick, and we are squared up at 14 up. We've got a tie game in the end bowl here, the 116th meeting going back to 1901. Matt Berry's back in the studio with Jesse for the halftime. One of the great rivalries in college football, two schools separated by 100 miles, separated by nothing at halftime. Old Miss ball to start the second half. Adam Mameen, Matt Hasselbeck, Pat McAfee, Molly McGrath will join us in a moment as well. And guys, the things that you all talked about before the game started, kind of playing out the way we were expecting it to play out. Yeah, Kylan Hill of Mississippi State has been the workhorse. Schrader's been getting the ball on the ground as well, and Gibson popped off a long one. Been a lot of running on both sides of the field tonight. Yeah, especially, you know, Ole Miss down 14 nothing early they didn't panic they didn't flinch they kept with their identity what the vision of this Matt Luke team is offensively we're going to run the football and our quarterback Plumley, he's going to be a big part of it and they get the two rushing touchdowns they're right back in the game tied up Tyler Knight gets bang shy of the 15 yard line Gary and Ely takes it to the 15 yard line moments ago Molly McGrath with Joe Moorhead what lost your team that 14 point Yeah, we, we got to score and they were able to put a drive together, get down and put in the end zone. And then we had, uh, you know, special teams punter drop the snap and should just kicked it, decided to run it, and that gave him short field. So they tied it up. It's a robbery game. So we got to figure out a way to win it. What does Garrett Schrader need to do in the second half? Play calm, play play, uh, play poise, protect the football, make some plays in the pass game, and keep doing what he's doing in the run game. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you, Mark. Thanks so much, Mal. There's some creativity on this run for Ely, setting him up in the slot and then rolling him for a first down. I, I get the feeling, and you guys talked about it earlier in the week, some of these college offensive coordinators and head coaches might maybe get more of a look at the next level because of guys like Lamar Jackson and what they're doing. Rich Rodriguez right in the thick of things there. Well, particularly in the running game, there, there seems to be so much more creativity in college football than there is in the NFL in the running game. Rich Rod's been doing this for 20 years. Yep, we talked about it. Pat White, one of the original innovators of that at the quarterback position. Ely, another good run out across the 40. 13 more for the true freshman in his first Egg Bowl. He was doing it at Glenville State. He did it at Tulane. He did it at Clemson. He did it at West Virginia. He's kind of like one of the grandfathers of this zone option, sure. spread option offense. And it's really taken off everywhere. And he said that when he was doing it at Glenville State, they said, well, he can't do a D1. Then we did D1 as he can't do it in SEC. And now they're doing it in the NFL. I think he kind of has a chip on his shoulder with that whole thing. Lovely. Changes directions. Still on his feet and is going to be taken down back to the 35-yard line. Everybody chasing Chauncey Rivers helps bring him down with Jaden Crumney. Well, this is another naked bootleg type thing where he's trying to get the edge and he can't get the edge. It's, again, they're not breaking contained. That time it was Chauncey Rivers that turned him back inside to his help, to his teammates. Big play for Mississippi State. Lost some yardage. Ole Miss is behind the chains now. Now you got to throw the ball. Maybe more in a drop back passing situation. Well, stick with the ground game and get about four on the play. 
third down and 12 in a tough spot on this is offense. Matt, you always say on second and long, you got to pick up at least half to give yourself a good third down and man is born. Now it's third and 12, they weren't able to do that. Just shows how much they believe in their running game. We've got a veteran offensive line. We mentioned those guys have started every game this season. Plumley, a little sidearm sling past the sticks for Dennis Jackson. Right at the 49 in Mississippi State Territory. I mean, that was a baseball throw right there. We mentioned Brett Favre that Plumley's from Hattiesburg. Brett Favre coached him a little bit when he was in high school. I had the opportunity to talk to Brett Favre about Plumley. Nice name drop there. I mean, it just, well, you know what happened? I, I, yeah. I was looking at Matt Luke. Matt Luke is cousins with Brett Favre. Matt Luke's mm. older brother played American Legion baseball with Brett. Coach, uh, coached by their dad, Irv Favre. Kinfolk, as he said. Ooh, Jackson made a shoestring catch and then went right back to the ground as Tyler Williams drilled up the Oxford native who's playing for Mississippi State. These are the ones where you're just trusting your buddy outside to get that block for you. Drummond leaves his guy hanging just a little bit, but we mentioned the rivalry game. Everybody in this state seems to know each other in one way, one shape or form, one way or another. They played against somebody or they're related to somebody or they looked up to somebody. Connor able to surge ahead. What a second, third, even fourth effort for Snoop as he picks up 14 yards and a first down. It looked like he was on top of a defender. Yeah, and Snoop's another guy from Hattiesburg, another freshman, but he's probably the most physical runner that they have. Not a big guy, he's only 215 pounds. Keeps his balance. Rides a guy on top of the man and then gets going again. He was on top of Marcus Murphy. Knee or elbow never hit the ground, so that play stayed alive. Now a yard on this play. Marquis Spencer on the stop. Snoop had a massive block in the first half to spring plumply for a touchdown. Big run. Young player, a lot of young, talented players on this old Miss team. Yep. And I like Snoop. You know, he's a yards after contact guy. And pretty much you can find a bunch of guys to run through a hole, but to get those yards after first initial contact, that's special. He's a good one. Well, that pocket is collapsing fast. How about the speed of the Mississippi State front? Fabian Lovett, a redshirt freshman who has started every game at nose guard this year. Well, this is a decent pass rush, but I think this ball's got to come out. Plumley holds on to it just a little bit too long. It's a three-step drop timing. You got to either throw it somewhere or throw it away. Plumley under pressure, lost the football. Bulldogs have it. Mississippi State has it. And then the ball comes free again. The Bulldogs will hold on. Willie Gay Jr. Welcome back to the lineup. Chauncey Rivers knocked it loose and Gay was Johnny on the spot. Plumley's trying to make a play, tries to do a little bit too much. Probably a fumble. The referees ruled a fumble on the field. Gay's able to pick it up and make something happen. We mentioned his impact was going to be big tonight. They were fired up to have him back. I asked their equipment staff, I said, hey, who's the one player you think will have the biggest impact? Those guys watch a lot of Mississippi State football. They all in unison said Willie Gay, number six. Watch out. He's back. Born and bred in Starkville, Mississippi, Starkville High School zone. We said it. He's been out due to all those suspensions. They staggered the eight game suspensions for several starters, including Willie Gay. And now he gets to sign the football after a second Mississippi State takeaway. Now Garrett Schrader. Hey, the old Miss defense says, I can do it too. Sam Williams off the edge, their best pass rusher with his sixth sack of the year. Sometimes they say after a turnover, put out the fire. Immediately on first down after a massive turnover and a big play by the other team's defense, get a sack, bring down Schrader, ball probably should have came out. And they also say expect a shot play, and that's exactly what happened there. They called a double move. Ole Miss was coached up and ready for it. They weren't fooled, and just like you said, Pat, a young quarterback there, you got to know when to give up on the play. Just throw it away. Right back to Kylan Hill, wrapped up from behind. The job to bring him down by Lakia Henry and Charles Wiley. 
It feels like every hit is kind of getting a little bit more thud in it. A little more pop, a little like more juice. Getting, I think it's getting a little bit more physical out here. This was a 14 0 Mississippi State lead. Ole Miss took advantage of some field position, came back to tie the game before halftime. Mississippi State came in as a very slight favorite. We expected a close game. We have been treated tonight. Yeah, and you said Ole Miss took advantage of the turnover. That's what Mississippi State has to do. Their last takeaway, they didn't, didn't take advantage. Yep. And again, here's the decision time here. It might have been two down territory. When you look at that play, play call, it might have said, hey, listen, we're going to go for this if we're inside in between that. Anywhere between that 30 and that 35 yard land is kind of no man's land. In the NFL, you probably kick it. College kickers, that operation is a little different. You might go for it more. This is really a little beyond the cusp of Jace Christman's range. His career long is 51 from here. It'd be right around there. They didn't want to risk it tonight. Fourth down and short. Trader. Lumps it up there and is caught by Dedrick Thomas for a first down inside the 15. Well, he gets to the fourth guy in his progression. He's going left to right. One, two, three, four to Dedrick Thompson, who's coming into his vision from the right to the left. Tom, uh, Dedrick Thomas is a great player, very shifty. He's a weapon, and he comes up big. Number four in the progression, doesn't get the ball often. That was huge. Had a touchdown in the Egg Bowl last year as well. Schrader, good deception on that keep as he takes it down to the nine-yard line. Schrader had good feel in that pocket, too. Kind of drifted to the left when he felt a little bit of pressure. Now he keeps this one, and it's getting a little testy. Oh, yes. It was right around this time last year where things got a little heated, to say the least. Good job by Hubert Owens and this officiating crew to make sure nothing seemingly escalated beyond what we saw. Steve Shaw, the SEC coordinator of officials, is here tonight, cringing as he watches a potential brawl break out. Hey, those Mississippi State offensive linemen, 345, 330, 310, 345, yeah. 335. And the refs are trying to stand in between. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, one of those 345s, at least 350, 355. <laughs> Pre-Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's how I feel. Kylan Hill had his jersey grabbed by Charles Wiley, and that may have stopped him just enough. It'll be third down and short coming up. Garrett Schrader in for the touchdown, and Mississippi State jumps back out in front. Let that thing ride with Kylan Hill and then bang, pull it out at the last second. Pop it up in between for your second touchdown of the night, Mr. Schrader. It's a little ride read. They got to run action to the sideline, get the defense going east and west. You pull it and you go north and south right up the gut for the touch. That was well executed. Christman has the extra point. A seven point Mississippi State advantage. Trying to take advantage of the takeaway. Rivers jarred it loose. Back in the lineup, Willie Gay nearly gave it back up, but rescued it, allowing Garrett Schrader to punch it home. What a game here in Starkville. Dogs on top by seven. Adam Amin, Matt Hasselbeck, Pat McAfee, Molly McGrath, an outstanding atmosphere here in Starkville tonight. And a seven-point lead for the Bulldogs after a Garrett Schrader touchdown. Tylen Knight from the three-yard line. Well, ahead of steam, and he got rocked at the 20. What a hit by Fred Peters, the safety. Fred Peters comes flying down, makes a play, scrapes over top, and Ooh. blows it up at the 20. There goes Ely pinballing his way towards the sticks. Looked like it was just shy, but we'll see where they spot him. Either way, good run by Jerry and Ely. 
talk about his baseball prowess as well. 31st round pick of the Arizona Diamondbacks this past spring. MVP of the Under Armour All American football game. He had the outstanding game. Number one recruit in the state of Mississippi. Both schools, along with the rest of the SEC, were hot on Jerry and Ely this past recruiting cycle. It's just so amazing. These guys are going to school, they're playing football, and they're also, like, during the season, taking batting practice, getting ready for baseball. Yeah. Season. Let's see where they spot him on this one. After the hit by Errol Thompson, Snoop Connor looked like he had enough. They're going to say first down, guys. Looked like it was enough. As Snoop has done a lot of physical running tonight, gets him close there. I mean, it looked like a good defensive stop, but first down here, move the chain. Well, and it's second and one, so even though you don't get much, that's called an efficient run. That's exactly what you're looking for. Your offensive line gets to fire out, you get the first down still. Connor gets tripped up by Thompson. Instead of throwing like a little wheel route, they do this long pitch. Yep. It's kind of an extended run, obviously. Yep, it's a run, and uh, they've got play action off of it. And when you see that action, if you're an inside linebacker, you're uh, Errol Thompson, you're going sideline to sideline. I mentioned earlier, he's a first and second down inside linebacker. He likes to play that nine on seven game. He doesn't want to run sideline to sideline necessarily. So they're going to get him moving and come back with that play action pass. Third down coming up. Ninety four point three decibels. No clue what that's in comparison to, <laughs> but I know it's loud. One hundred and forty is a jet takeoff, which would cause an eardrum rupture. Toss to Connor, boy, that long pitch you talked about, Pat, that looked a little dangerous, and guess who? Errol Thompson is there to sniff it out again. Fourth down. Well, there's a little too much adventure on the snap. These snaps have just been a little high and fast tonight. That pitch was dangerous. I don't like it. Thompson wasn't fooled. Again, I would expect them to come back to that same action, but fake it with a play-action pass off of it, because Thompson, he's been ready for that. That'll take us to the close of quarter number three. The road team has won the last four at bowls, but it's the home team, Mississippi State, on top. The Cowbells have been roaring tonight. The rushing touchdown to plenty, a seven-point game. You're watching the SEC on ESPN in an electric atmosphere at Davis Wade Stadium. They play journeys, don't stop believing as the cell phone lights go on. And I know they say in the SEC it just means more. Yeah, that break meant a little more to these two. How about that? Awesome to see a proposal and a yes. That was the key. The yes was probably the most important part there. Pat McAfee, I know, likes that. But it's going to be a touchback. Came close. Ole Miss will come out to the 20-yard line at 30-yard net punt at the start of the fourth quarter. Our game summary, for those of you just joining us, Mississippi State at five wins, needs a win tonight to continue their bowl streak. They've been to nine consecutive bowl games. Two true freshman quarterbacks in this game tonight with Garrett Schrader for Mississippi State and John Bryce Plumley for Ole Miss. First time in six years, the game was tied at halftime. That was a game that Dak Prescott's team went on to win in overtime, the only overtime game in the 115 prior meetings between these two. You mentioned these true freshman quarterbacks. They're playing really well tonight. Yeah. Schrader has two rushing touchdowns. Nick Gibson has the other one for Mississippi State. And he's still on his feet out there midfield. Savage. We talk about it all the time. Solve the riddle up the middle. Darrell Williams back in there. Double teams at the point of attack. Once again, Nick Gibson right up the gut. Hit him where it hurts, Pat. Refusing to go down at the end. I love that. Boy, two runs for Gibson. They've been impactful to say the least. A 28-yard touchdown and a 30-yard run right there. 
This one does not have the distance, folks. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage as we check in with Molly. Adam, Daryl Williams could hardly put any weight on his right leg, and he was in visible pain, but he's insisting that they let him try to play. He was listed as questionable with a right ankle injury, but he's out there. Nothing is keeping him from this game, and he was yelling and screaming encouragement at his teammates on one leg. Look at him. Push Benito Jones, maybe the best defensive tackle for Ole Miss on its front. I liked our time with Darrell Williams, yeah. nominated for man of the year. They talk about the leadership that he brings. Three-year starter. Whipped out to Javante Payton. He's got a first down to the 39 of Ole Miss. Picks up 11. And everyone's getting involved. You know, Payton, Javante Payton, more of a special teams player. Catches a few passes here and there, but this passing game's got to be, I think something has to come alive in this passing game to, uh, to put this game away. Well, that's a good way to start there. Schrader throws a dime. That was just the seventh catch for Javante Payton in a Mississippi State uniform. He's a junior college wide receiver, the number one junior college wide receiver coming out of Northwest Mississippi. And look at this formation. All 22 players are basically yeah. within 10 yards of each other right now. Like a grenade would get every single person on the field right there. Not defending every blade of grass right now. Kylan Hill trying to find some space in that congestion. Oh, wow, things are getting chippy. How about that? Kadir Shepard <laughs> flinging his legs into the air and a few words for Farad Green after that. Shepard, the former Syracuse Orange, his fourth year at Ole Miss. Yeah, K Kadir Shepard, he's not afraid to mix it up. This is called J-O-P, <laughs> jump on pile. I saw him go body blow, body blow in the uh, Auburn game. <laughs> Throwing punches to the stomach. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably not something they coach. Obviously not recommended, but <laughs> fair point. I, 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 that, you know what it looked like? It looked like when Pat was crowd surfing at college game day, actually. That's what he was trying to do. Different goals, I think, in mind for Shepard and McAfee in those two scenarios. Willie Hibbler makes the stop on Schrader. Third down and medium coming up for Mississippi State inside of 12 to play. Third down and medium, but again, I would say this might be two down territory, and then you call this third down play accordingly. They just brought Kylan Hill back into the game. He's had a massive game thus far. Two yards shy of what would be his eighth 100-yard rushing game this season. Look for the corner blitz here down the bottom. Is that Kedron Smith? Corner lined up on the near side for Ole Miss. Now he's going to back off. And here he comes. Matt, great call. What did you see? Oh, wait, the ball's loose. That's what we see. Ole Miss takes over at the 33-yard line, and you nailed it, Hasselbeck. Kedron Smith came in on the corner blitz, and it's Josiah Coatney out of the pack with the football. Yeah, that's a big play. I mean, anytime the ball is on the hash, as a quarterback, you got to find that safety on that side. If the safety is really wide, he's really wide for a reason. That's a big opportunity there for the defense to come up with that turnover, save some points, and Ole Miss right back in this one. I think Matt Corral's in. Oh, for Matt, I beg your pardon. It is Matt Corral, change at quarterback, redshirt freshman, and Matt, you pointed it out. You thought at some point, as well as Plumlee had been playing, we might see Matt Corral check in, and his first pass is good for 12 and a first down. Boy, nice. Matt Corral started the first four games of this season before a rib injury against Cal, so it's been John Rice Plumlee starting the last eight games, including tonight. We thought we might see him at some point, but guys, halfway through the fourth quarter, down by seven. How about this roll of the dice from Matt Luke? He's been sitting for two hours and 40 minutes. He comes out swinging on first down. Let's see what this guy's got. He's had a heck of a season thus far, to be quite honest with you. Well, Matt Luke said he didn't want to be predictable as an offense. This is not predictable. Some people think Matt Corral is maybe a better passer. They blitz him on this first down, and Drummond gets loose again. Two passes, two connections with Ontario Drummond, the Laurel, Mississippi native, down inside the 25 to the 20. This is all out blitz. Bob Shoup, defensive coordinator, probably felt like you, Pat. Hey, let's blitz this, blitz this guy. He's been sitting on the bench. Does a nice job of knowing where his hot is. Gets it to the receiver, yards after the catch. 38-yard gain, but more importantly, he sent a message to Mississippi State that he's prepared, he's ready. He'll recognize your blitz and make you pay. 
which probably means they'll stop doing it. And off Snoop Connor, wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 coming up. How about Bob Shoup, the defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, the reaction? Somebody did something he did not like. That is a fair assessment. Second down for Ole Miss, Matt Corral. Nope. Rifles and is picked off. Marcus Murphy, another formerly suspected player, makes a huge play in the egg bowl. Well, this is just a rookie mistake. Matt Corral gets too little too greedy. He pumps it short and tries to throw it deep, but Murphy is right there. This ball had no chance. This is almost like a predetermined idea or a throw. He overthought it. I had a quarterback coach once that said, say no to too cute, you're trying to do too much. That's exactly what Matt Corral did right there. He did a great job against the blitz earlier. They played coverage there. He tried to do too much, make something out of nothing. It wasn't there. And you see Plumlee saying, hang in there, man. We still got some time to win this game, but that was a, that was a bad decision and poor throw. Back-breaking third turnover by Ole Miss. And Kylan Hill is trying to make the Rebels pay as he takes a big gainer out to the 28-yard line. We go down the bottom. Adam, ever since the fourth quarter began, Kylan Hill has had a different passion and edge to him. He was furious about that overturned first down on their last drive. He started yelling and was so upset. Coaches and teammates had to calm him down, and it took quite some time to do so. So he's taking it out on the field right now. Over 100 yards with that run, Molly. Eighth time that he's run for 100 this year. That ties the single-season Mississippi State record. Record, and that's his 11th career 100-yard rushing game. Two have come against Ole Miss in the Egg Bowl. Right back to Hill. You know, what Molly just said reminded me of something you said earlier about Kyla Hill. This dude runs angry. I punted a couple guys who return angry. You just try not to get in front of them. Kylan Hill has been running angry for a long time here in Mississippi State. And this year, climbing the ranks here at Mississippi State. Anthony Dixon is the only Mississippi State Bulldog to lead the SEC in rushing. That was in that 2009 season. Hill has an opportunity to do that this year. Came in with over 1,200 yards to lead the conference. the chess match that's going on right now defensive coordinator offensive coordinator you know the run's coming can you stop it there goes hill you see a slew of white jerseys just trying to jump on top of them but kylan hill moves the chains again and i think it was pat you talked about it in the open the size the massive size of this mississippi state offensive line across the board 350 345 330 with a running back like Kylan Hill, tough to stop. We are currently in four-minute offense. I was just going to say, Pat, 4.15 left in this game. Kylan Hill time. Cannot afford a giveaway right now either if you're Mississippi State, which is trying to get to a bowl game for a 10th consecutive year. They'll do it with a win tonight. There is Hill. Pick up yardage to about the 42. What a great egg bowl it's been on this Thanksgiving. When we're done, John Anderson and Michael Eames will give you an update on all three NFL games that took place today. The Bears came back. Unfortunately for you Mississippi State fans, Dak Prescott took a loss with the Cowboys. Looked like Jerry Jones was very emotional after that game as well. Plus, we'll get you set for rivalry weekend and Matt Jones in the Iron Bowl in the absence of Tua Tungavailoa this weekend. That's Sports Center coming up. After we're done, Dak did throw for 355 in that 26-15 loss to the Bills. How about Buffalo, by the way? 9-3 on the season. Mm. They've got the Ravens next Sunday. Hey, that's going to be a slugfest. Absolutely. On the road in Buffalo. I guess the Bills are at home against Buffalo. Across the 45 goes Hill. It's going to set up third down. Huge third down with three minutes to play. Speaking of slugfest, here we go. Highland Hill. The workhorse of the team. They're putting it in his hands, obviously, with under three minutes left in the game, and his offensive line. Got to pick up this first down. Keep the thing rolling. Ole Miss needs a stop. 
and Matt, desperately. And Matt Luke has saved his timeouts. He's hoping that his defense can bail him out, get him a stop here, give him a chance. And if Mississippi State does pick up the first down, because Luke kept those timeouts, it does not end the game. And look at this. All 11 guys yep. within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Big boy football. Oh, a pass for Schrader. He's trying to get one off. And he is hit. Brought down by Jacquez Jones. What a job he's done this year in the absence of Mohamed Sonogo, a huge sack. And I don't hate the play call. You, they know the run's coming. They go with the naked bootleg. It's actually a really nice job by Schrader to not throw the ball away, stay in bounds, keep that clock running, or in this case, force Ole Miss to use one of their timeouts. <laughs> You're still a loose kid. I was going to say. <laughs> Monster. What right a hunt by wow. Tucker Day. Mm -hmm. Elijah Moore spinning away. Making the cut and down across the 15-yard line. Here we go. Ole Miss football with two minutes to go. Can the Mississippi State defense, which looked to be full strength with all the guys returning, make another stand? And they don't know what quarterback's coming out right now. The quarterback change maybe has them wondering who are they going to see. They're going to see the runner. They're going to see the thrower. They've been able to benefit off of both of them, forcing a fumble and a pick. This Mississippi State defense has been hot. Big punt flips the field now. And it's interesting, it looks like Ole Miss is going with Matt Corral. I don't know if I agree with this decision. I, if Plumlee's healthy, I think I'll go with Plumlee in this situation. Let's see what Corral can do. Last pass was a pick. This one is a wide one to Jonathan Mingo, and he will step out of bounds right near the sticks. That and will then. get, should be, let's see, about short. It's like a yard short. Sec looks like maybe second and one, but that is a great throw. Far hash, outside in Reed. Let's see if he's in bounds. Oh, yeah. Lo looks like the receiver is in bounds. They mentioned that they, a lot of people think that Corral is the better passer. Maybe that's why he's in here in this two minute drill. Well, he's under pressure, gets hit by Gay, the rest of the Bulldog defense. Let's see where they spot him. It may be enough for the first down. Well, this clock is continuing to move. Now it's going to be ruled a first down, but the clock kept moving. Yeah, they lost some seconds there that they uh, they should have back. And Mingo stepped out at 2:01, so the clock went on the referee's signal as well. Now trying to find Mingo. There's Cameron Dantzler with the pass breakup. That'll bring up second down and ten. The clock stops at 1:29. Still two timeouts for Ole Miss. Picture perfect coverage right there. Quick slant, they tried to hit, batted away, 129 left. Blitz off the edge. Corral's got time. Underthrown and intercepted by Errol Thompson. No, it's going to be ruled incomplete. Official comes in from the far side, says incomplete. That would have sealed the deal for Mississippi State. It looks like this ball might have gotten batted. Maybe Brian Cole when he was coming in off the edge. I don't know, but Errol Thompson had a chance yeah. to seal the deal. Now it's third and ten. Let's see what Ole Miss has got. Right call. Matt Corral on third down. Trying to find Sanders, and he does. Picks up the first down out near midfield. Directing traffic and zipping one for 20. Absolute strike from Corral there for 20 yards to pick up the first down. But there are two flags thrown on the play. One in the middle of the field and one on the near side. Ineligible player downfield. 55 offense. Five yard closes. We see third down. Ben Brown, one of the veteran linemen, was beyond three yards of the line of scrimmage when Matt Corral released the pass. It's so tough when you have a guy scrambling out of the pocket, but it is a penalty. It negates the first down. Well, it's a dash pass. It's a designed rollout. So he drops back straight, sets the rush, and then gets out to the right. Just really unfortunate. Not a play that probably gets repped a lot. Three-man rush. Corral. Pressure. Down he goes. Chauncey Rivers and Kobe Jones. Pat, this is what you call a swim move and a dip and a rip move and a see you later move.
that's just a swipe of the hands. You see Robert Mathis do things like that. It happened so quick, I don't know what happened. Fourth down and 24. He's got Launches, it. Sanders caught it! Down inside the 30 yard line, Braylon Sanders, the biggest catch of his life. Like I was saying, Matt Corral is gonna do something special <laughs> in this moment. This is unbelievable. Everybody focuses in on Elijah Moore. I get it, he's got more catches by himself than everybody else combined. Well, as you said, Pat, it may actually end up benefiting Ole Miss, who gets to settle in for first and 10 from the 29. Pressure on Corral, he is hit as he throws, and a flag is thrown. Brian Cole, Coming in, the hybrid safety linebacker. Personal foul, rough the pass. Defense number 32. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. We'll spot him at the 14 and a half yard line. It is Brian Cole on the penalty. I like Brian Cole as a player. He's a great blitzer. Gets a little aggressive here, gets him in the head. You're probably going to get the flag. I think oh. I agree with this call. It's a tough yeah. one, though. Um, yeah, you hit a quarterback up high. Matt Austin, your thoughts? I think it's a good call. He came in with his hands up. He did look, he looked like he definitely took a little bit of a swing with that right arm, so I'm okay with the call. First down from the 15. Corral on the slant, incomplete. Was trying to find Sanders once more, who's been a stud in the fourth quarter. Tyler Williams with the coverage, second down. Drama in Starkville. Corral, end zone, more, and it's incomplete. Had a shot at that one to try to help tie the game. Third down and 10 coming up with 34 seconds remaining. It's a really good play call. It's exactly what you're looking for. You got verticals. The ball's a little bit high. That's a play that I believe Elijah Moore is good enough to make. He'll probably get another opportunity right here. Corral. Sideline, Mingo makes the catch shy of the sticks, but will step out of bounds to stop the clock. They save a timeout, and they set up fourth down and about three, maybe a short four. Game on the line right now in one of the great rivalries in all of college football. This is a free play. Corral to the end zone for Sanders. Did he come down with it? He did. We have not seen a Outside. signal. Defense, number 42, unabated what? to the quarterback. Half the distance wow. to the goal. Wow. So, Holy. Nick Paul, unabated to the quarterback, Matt Austin. Again, we've talked about this before. They want to make sure nothing gets to the QB. Let's take a listen. We didn't hear a whistle on that particular one. That just might be us. It is a first down. It was a short yardage situation. But Matt Austin, that's a key play right there. You don't want to get the quarterback hit on a clean play. Blitz coming. Corral towards the end zone for more, and it's broken up. Incomplete. But another penalty match flag is thrown from the far side of the field. Brian Cole was in coverage. A little bit of a late flag, though, man. A little Catch bit of a late fans, flag. Sir. Defense number 32. Ball was placed at the spot of the foul. Two-yard line. Automatic first down. Indeed. Pass interference on Cole. Fresh set of downs. First and goal. Ole Miss. 20 seconds left. Only one timeout. Corral. Rolling. Cutting. No. Gets stacked up. He gets hit by Willie Gay Jr. and Ole Miss has to use that last timeout. 12 seconds left. 
It's been very interesting to me. Not only did they bring Corral in, who's done a great job. He picked up a fourth and 24 earlier with a throw. But in this position, you saw it earlier with John Rice Plumley running in him with his athleticism. I don't know why you wouldn't put him back in in this particular spot. Well, and I, I don't know why you wouldn't throw the ball away right there. That, that timeout is precious. Right now, though, it's second and goal here, right into the teeth of this student section. Corral, oh, it's batted down at the line of scrimmage, and Willie Gay Jr. has been impactful all night. Third and goal. And this is a touchdown if Willie Gay Jr. doesn't do what he does here. As a quarterback, you've got to find a way to get that ball around. If it's not up over the top, you get the guy to jump, you got to sidearm it, you got to find a way. Impeccable play by Willie Gay. Third down and goal. Nine seconds left. No timeouts on this. Here comes the pressure. Corral towards the goal line. It is caught. It is a touchdown. Elijah Moore. And they're an extra point away from tying the game. And penalty markers get thrown after the play. Oh. Uh oh, big time extra point here. If this is excessive celebration. A sportsman like conduct foul, eight on the offense. At Pilsen, we'll be in for 15 yards on the kickoff. We'll have the try, one on top down. Now, everybody on the Mississippi State coaches staff here are saying, no, no, right now we want it. Yeah. From the, from the three yard line from the try, wow. we'll have it on time down. So this is going to be an extended extra point try because wow. of the excessive celebration penalty against Ole Miss. So it comes down to the foot of Luke Logan, the junior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, a 35-yard extra point to tie the game. The pick is up, and it is no good! Field. The Bulldogs are celebrating. There's still four seconds left in this game. There are still four seconds left. There are still four seconds left. They have stormed the field. They have to get him off. Here's the touchdown by Moore. He got in despite the hit from Dantzler. But Luke Logan, who had an opportunity, and you saw Elijah Moore, the excessive celebration, invoking, invoking DK Metcalf. Luke Logan had the opportunity to tie the game and missed it wide right. And now just listen to this here. We're going onside kick here for Ole Miss. And Matt Corral, from what I've heard, has the arm to reach from about 60, 65 yards. They got to get the ball and get it fast. They won't. Mississippi State has it. And they'll get into victory formation to win the end ball. Javante Payton snared the football for the Bulldogs. Mississippi State is bowl eligible now for the 10th straight season. What an egg bowl. They won't be able to stop them from partying tonight in Stuckville. Mississippi State in an instant classic wins it by one.
Incredible, wild, jaw-dropping, heart-wrenching game tonight here in Starkville. Kind of the definition of a rivalry game. It was chippy at times. There's hugs and handshakes after. But look at this crowd and these guys so proud. What a game. The trophy cost 250 bucks back in 1927 when it was introduced. 21 to 20 in a classic. Mississippi State wins the Egg Bowl. For Matt Hasselbeck, Pat McAfee, Molly McGrath, and our outstanding crew, Adam Amin, taking you to Sports Center.